Hey there for Dragonfly and me friends. Welcome to another episode of Jean in the Garden. Technically I'm in the kitchen, but we're gonna do, we're doing something gardening here today. Um, I'm in Michigan, it's rainy and um, it's kind of cold outside. I was going to videotape this in the greenhouse, but with the rain, I decided I didn't wanna take my phone and my cameras out there and do this. So I am in my kitchen and I am going to demonstrate on how to create a self-watering planter utilizing a water bottle. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Jean Roman and this is for Dragonflies and Me where I do cooking demonstrations, gardening topics. I host my podcast here as well and we do a lot of fun stuff. So if this is your first time, please subscribe and like so that we can grow my channel together. Thank you so much for being here and thanks in advance for subscribing and liking. So um, what I wanna do today is I wanna show you how to utilize a one gallon plastic bottle, water plastic bottle. And the Crystal Geyser brand, no affiliate linking here. Uh, this uh, shape of a bottle, as you can see, it's more square. It does work a little bit better than the, oops, than the Ice Mountain ones. I personally like the Ice Mountain ones better because I like the handle when pouring, uh, but the Crystal Geyser does work better for a planter. But I'm gonna show you a quick uh, demonstration on how to do both. So first steps is, uh, first thing to let you know, is I am getting ready to transplant my tomatoes from their little uh, initial seed pots. And I'm also gonna do my peppers and my eggplants. And these are gonna get moved out into the greenhouse. Um, still a little chilly. I do not wanna put anything outside that is gonna to have to overnight under 50 degrees. So I'm gonna be working on some of these, but they may be housed inside for a few days, or I might just wait till the early part of uh, next week to do them all. But I wanted to get this demonstration out. Uh, for those of you who do have good weather and that can do some transplanting and start uh, putting your plants out, hardening them off. So again, I'm in Michigan, so I'm in the med Midwest zone five. And so we wait until Memorial Day weekend, smart folks do, uh, to get our hot, preferred hot temperature plants outside. So peppers, eggplants, uh, tomatoes, zucchini, squash, uh, beans. Those are all things that need to have a certain temperature, uh, especially overnight and the soil temperature. So many people think, oh, I'm gonna get ahead of the game. But when you plant a tomato or any of these crops into cold soil, you actually stunt them and you actually delay yourself. And so getting ahead of the game and fighting mother nature is not always a, a battle you can win. But that's on another topic. Today, we're gonna look at how to create a self-watering uh, planter out of a plastic water bottle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to take the uh, label off and it does come out pretty easily. Um, I did do one already just so we can kind of see uh, there's the first baby. And if you can see, it's already got the water in there and it's already taking up water. Uh, and my little tomato plant is so happy. And she'll be even happier when I can get her outside in those beautiful brand new raised beds we've been working on. If you haven't been uh, watching me, uh, be sure to stop over at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com as well as my Facebook and Instagram, both fordragonfliesandme.com to see everything I'm doing. Uh, lots of great content, different content on all my platforms. So you don't want to, you don't want to miss any of it, folks. So we do need to keep the lid on. Don't throw your lids away because that is what it's going to keep all the dirt in your planter. So I am going to just take a regular kitchen steak knife um, and I'm going to cut this just a little more than halfway up. So right about here. So if you're counting the lines, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about to the seven mark line right there, seven, eight, yeah. And so with the blade away, I'm going to kind of just stick that, stick that in there and get that cut. So it's super loud. And then just a regular pair of ki kitchen shears, I am going to cut the remaining way around. Super easy, friends. There we go. So now I have my water reservoir and I have my planter. And now that I can get in there, I'm going to get that all smoothed away. And as you can see, it's gonna fit right in there. 
And once it will seem teetery when you're doing that, but once you get the water and the soil in there, it is stable. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fill it up with water. And you want to fill it up probably about three quarters way. And you're going to have to fill these up repeatedly. You're going to have to watch um, so that your plants are getting water. But this is a great way to save time. And time is what we're all fighting against, right, guys? Okay. So now the next key element to doing this is putting in your watering, uh, your, your holes, your drainage holes, so that the water can be taken up. So most of the times we are looking for drainage holes and containers so the water goes out. This is actually taking water up, which works fabulously for tomatoes because generally tomatoes want to be watered, dried out, and then watered again. You never want to water a tomato plant and its leaves. You always want to water the soil around it. So this, um, by taking it up, it'll level it off. And then you'll be able to fit, put your finger in the soil right about to your first knuckle to test if it needs more water. And then you can, uh, refill the reservoir. So I'm going to double check, make sure that that is a good. And I'm going to put a little bit more water in here because as it is right now, it is not. So you're going to want to watch. And as your water declines, again, you're going to test that soil and then you're going to remove this lid part, the planter part, and then refill that, making sure that that's stable. You don't want it tipping over. So next key element is we are going to make some holes. So um, you can use just a standard screw, a big one, a little one, whatever you have, and you want to put in holes just enough. So I would, I'm going to put about three holes on each side and you want to make sure that they're big enough so that water can be taken up. And you want to get them as close to the lid as you can. So I'm going to put in about oops, nine to 10, 11 holes, making sure. And then once I'm done with this, I am going to go through with my hubby Dave's uh, Leatherman knife. If you don't have a Leatherman knife, you can just use a pair of scissors. And I'm going to stick that scissor in there and just make those holes a little bit bigger. So as you can see, right there, right there. And then, or if you have a Leatherman knife, like I snag my husband's, easy peasy. Just going to make those holes a little bit bigger. Not so big, but just about enough of the size of the tip. There we go. And then we're almost ready. So now once I put that in, you're going to see it fill up with the water. So I'm going to show you that. And as you can see, there the water starts coming in and the plant is going to get watered. I am actually going to put a little bit more in there. There we go. And pour that out. So next step, I am going to take my soil. It's got a leaf in there. And then I'm going to take my little plant. I'm actually going to cut this down a little bit because it doesn't need to be quite this big. You can put more soil in it if you want to. Um, I'm just thinking this is going to be in here briefly. You do not have to do this, folks. This is just me working with what I have here. So these are my baby super Italian paste tomatoes. And so I'm going to take that out of there, put that one in there. And then I am going to, and if you recall when I planted these, I planted uh, inside of this planter, this cardboard planter, the eggshell, remember? So this little tomato plant has been getting calcium and it has been growing beautifully. And so I am would usually, I would put this on the bottom um, of the planter to kind of um, stable, make it a little bit more stable. But I'm gonna take this plant now and I'm going to remove the two bottom 
I can't, I, I feel kind of ashamed right now. I can't think of the name. Uh, it starts with a P, but they're the, the first leaves that a seed comes up with, but it's not, they're not true leaves. So this soil is just perfect. And some of the eggshells are dropping down. But now the key to planting a tomato plant, whether it is transplanting like this or in the garden, is you don't want to plant that tomato straight down. If you look on the stem of a tomato plant, and I taught this in one of my, uh, indeter what it, what's the difference between indeterminate and determinate tomatoes? Those, all those little white hairs that are on, I'm gonna actually come closer to this and show you guys. So you can see all the little white hairs, see those on the stem? Those are potential hair roots. So you want to utilize that, that's a long stem. So I want to very carefully not to snap it. I'm going to take it like that and then I'm going to plant it in there. I'm gonna bring the dirt up around and then plant that tomato plant. And I'm actually gonna go outside, I ran out of dirt in this and I'm gonna get some more soil for this. But um, there you go. So now that plant, as you can see in there, half of that stem is now planted and it's going to make the base of the tomato much stronger. And then once I transplant this into my garden, my raised beds, I'm actually going to probably rip off most of these leaves that you're seeing right now and do the same thing. I'm going to bend that stem carefully, making sure not to snap it. However, tomatoes are pretty hardy. And because of those are all root, uh, potential hair roots, if you did snap it, you can actually stick it in dirt water and it will reroot. You won't, it won't totally kill it. You just want to keep like the first couple top leaves so that the energy is going into that. So now there we go. We have our little planter. And now we're going to stick it in to the base of the container. And now that water is going up into the planter and it is going to take care of my little tomato plant. So friends, easy peasy way to make a planter. You don't have to go to the stores and buy all kinds of expensive gadgets that you're going to use for you know, eight weeks of the year, 12 weeks of the year. And yes, of course they're reusable, um, but you wanna be able to recycle and be earth friendly. So if you use water bottles like we do, then let's utilize them. Even the little smaller water bottles, you could do the exact same thing. Um, I have the big ones and so that's what we're using. But as always, I am super excited to be here teaching you more gardening uh, hacks and, and fun tips and tricks uh, for your garden to make you successful. But in the meantime, um, again, if you found value in this video, please be sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and uh, visit me at my social media platforms at both Instagram and Facebook, and definitely go on over to my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com, where I have daily content, recipes, gardening. Uh, I just did um, the hummingbird migration pattern, and when should you be putting out your hummingbird feeders? So we're getting ready to do that here. But Dave and I are going to finish working at all of our water bottles and getting them prepped for transplanting. So friends, as always, be sure to eat fresh, shop local, and have a happy day. See you next time, friends.